Until a year or two ago, I wasn't the biggest fan of more narrative-driven games. Since then, I've gained a much greater appreciation for them. But one of the things that started it all was in August of 2020, when the game A Short Hike came to the Nintendo Switch. A Short Hike isn't the most narrative-driven game out there, but it definitely became considered that, as it was a great starting point for myself. The game sort of has an Animal Crossing vibe to it, and follows the quest of a young girl-slash-bird taking, well, a short hike to the top of the mountain Hawk Peak. To be totally honest, I'm not sure what got me to pick up the game at launch, considering at the time, it wasn't really my thing. Whatever that reason, I'm glad I picked up the game and as I adored it. Of course, I'm not here to talk about the game, but about its soundtrack, composed by Mark Sparling. Arguably, Mark's most notable recent work is A Short Hike, although amongst other works he recently composed the opening theme for Shantae and the Seven Sirens. Recently, I was lucky enough to have an interview with Mark, where we talked a lot about Short Hike, and a fair amount about his other works as well. I'm gonna share our questions and answers, as well as give some commentary and analysis. code stuff was done on Adam's side. I have used like uh, FMOD before, but um, it just didn't seem... Just like with the timeline of the project, uh, yeah, he just felt that... And I guess the system that I had in mind was just going to be... He just felt it would be easier to do that via code. Um, but yeah, basically I just sort of split up each area into different subsections. Let me see if I can find... Um, like literally he would just send me a map of the world and I would, um, you know, go into the game, play around in that area. So we could take the beach, for example. This is really messy, but I'll do want to just even see. Um, and just sort of think about what I wanted to highlight, uh, and what, where there could be sort of different... Uh, transitionary areas. So like in the beach, for example, you have like that sort of towny area um, where you have like, you know, you interact with like the dude with the shovel, you've got the uh, the climbers club, you've got uh, the person who gives you the compass. So like that was sort of where I wanted to like introduce that main melody. That sort of, I mean, it carries through at the peak. It doesn't really sort of come in anywhere else. Um, but yeah, so just like highlighting that area with the melody, but then um, just like for each of the sort of two other areas, there's one where you're sort of running along uh, the shoreline and there's sort of like a campsite in the back. And then there's uh, one that's a little bit further over um, with uh, someone painting basically. And uh, yeah, I, I just sort of wanted to come up with like it's basically, it's the same chord progression, um, essentially, but it's just different sort of backings. Later on, Mark shared some more information about this, some of the technical aspects of it, and it's really impressive. I'm surprised I don't see this in other games, although it definitely requires a lot more work as you have to create all the layering and whatnot. Hopefully we'll see it more in the future, since the technology works. I mean, it just worked well as a name, one for one, but uh, it definitely is the same melody. And, you know, I played a lot of Wind Waker as a kid. Like, that I was a big game a for me. a little bit of that in there. <laughs> oh yeah, tons, tons of, that was a huge inspiration. Like, The Great Sea, I think, is the name of the track. Yeah, um, I haven't played too much Wind Waker, but what I remember, it definitely has a bit of that. <laughs> yeah, so that was like a huge inspiration. Uh, the boat kind of came later. It was. An interesting it was sort of mainly for the switch release um oh, before that great. i remember that now yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so that was like probably a year later and so yeah i was just sort of coming back that was an interesting one because like everything else was written within this short of sort of like one to two month period um dang when would that have been that must have been like like two years ago at least. I believe the um, Switch one came out in late 2019, if that helps. 
Yeah, so it... I'm trying to think if it... Maybe it, was, it must have been 2018 then. Um, maybe I could double check that. Yeah, it came out on Humble. Humble Choice. Which I guess at the time was Humble Monthly. Oh, okay, never mind. I was wrong. It was uh, late 2020. Jeez. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah, I keep, I keep doing that. Everyone's in where like, you get the year off, one year off because of the last year and everything. Yeah, it yeah, feels... totally. <laughs> now everything feels like way stretched out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that, that one was like, yeah, definitely in, inspired by the main theme. And it's just sort of like this extra thing um, we wanted to add, or Adam wanted to add. Um, since he was adding the boat, he wanted to have like a little bit of extra content for um, for the Switch release. It was really cool hearing about how Mark was able to take this whole new song and integrate it perfectly into the already existing soundtrack. Seriously, I didn't realize this was added in for the Switch release until after I beat the game. I think that his process for it, well, it made a lot of sense, and as we'll hear in a later question, sometimes don't mess if it's already working. But you also want to mix it up a little bit, which is probably why he added in a bit of that Zelda Wind Waker flair. Um, I'm trying to think what order it went in. So the town definitely came first. So I was trying to nail down um, the vibe and the spirit of it. We actually did like this was the 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 one that you heard is the first. The first pass I did, but we did two other ones, um, just to sort of see. Adam was kind of unsure about what he wanted the music to sound like, um, but we ended up cycling back to the first one. Um, so that was the first one. Um, I think I did some demos before that, just like roughly how I wanted how things might work, the sort of like locationally based just so he could test it. Um, yeah, I think Forest probably came next. Uh, that one was actually based off of like an old demo. I used to do these like daily um, songs if you want to call them they're just like sketches but i made them on like a game boy or game boy emulator like a, yeah oh, i've heard isn't it what's it i know there's like a name for it or something like the game boy sound font tool or something oh yeah lsdj little sound dj um let me see if i can find it i think it's on band camp over this one yeah Send that over. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty tight timeline, and I had all these demos, so I sort of assembled a bunch of them, and I was like sending them to Adam just to see if there's anything that clicked. Because um, yeah, it was like I said, it was like a one to two month turnaround, and I was a little worried about getting everything done and everything being really well done. So most of the Game Boy stuff didn't really click, but this one did. Um, so yeah, that that became the forest. I feel like the ridge, the one with the tower, tower ridge, yeah. um, was probably the last. I think I was working on the peak sort of in between that. I don't know if it necessarily affected. I guess like the ridge, I knew that like once I had done the forest and the town, it kind of became difficult to sort of differentiate um the ridge from the other two and i think that's sort of where those sort of more synthy elements came from um so that was definitely one one thing that affected i think the way i sort of did things but other than that not really i don't think it's just sort of looking at each area you know slowly discovering what this game sounds like um but I don't know. Adam gave me some really good references. We sort of nailed down some really good sort of references, like Jib uh, Studio Ghibli, uh, Joe Hisaishi. You know, oh, yeah, I could for Ghibli. hear that now. The Ghibli thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ghibli was a big one. 
uh, Swift Jan Stevens, uh, Carrie and Lowell, specifically. Yeah, that was a big one as well. Uh, just like his arrangements. I ask this question because I sort of wanted to get a sense for how he was thinking about each song in relation to another, and it seemed like it went pretty linearly overall, which makes a lot of sense. You have the story in mind and you want the music to reflect that, which happens pretty nicely in a short hack. I think it's like... It's when the game gets a little bit tougher, I think, and more... You've got that mechanic of where like your feathers are freezing. Yeah, yeah. That and there was sort of this, I don't know, this, this sort of idea of like, we wanted to have it build and be a bit more of like a, a moment, you know, have it be a little bit more threatening than the rest of the forest as being this sort of thing. Um, and obviously it's snow and everything else, you know, is like grass and leaves and stuff. And so, that sort of informed the inspiration or the instrumentation a bit more. You know, you got like more sort of colder instruments. I don't know, but like, yeah, like more piano heavy, um, and then obviously more sort of leaning on the orchestral side to like push that. Not necessarily epic, but you know, like the stakes are a little bit higher type thing. Yeah, yeah, and I could. I think not only was the piano. Or was there more piano? But just the, or you, you phrased this like heavier on the piano. I guess the piano felt heavier too. I think just for me, yeah. it, was like, it just felt like it hit harder, which was really interesting. Yeah, just leaving a bit more space for it, especially at the beginning, right? It's like mostly piano. I think there's like and just like big spacey reverbs and stuff like that. You know, it's like trying to emphasize you don't really come across a lot of people up there either so it's like that sort of loneliness of it as well um of being up there but i feel like i don't know I, some of that might have just been it was probably just like subconscious um just you know listening to a lot of other game music and like internalizing what like wintry or like icy snowy music should sound like it didn't even really occur to me that this song would sound the way it did because of the game's difficulty, because I don't consider the game to be too hard, but yeah, it does get tougher in this moment. And a lot of games are like this, where a tougher moment has tougher quote-quote music. And it's just interesting to see it reflected even in a game like this, which you wouldn't consider its difficulty that much. I just like couldn't really decide how I wanted that one to be presented. So the thing about Boat Buds and the thing about the Peak is they work slightly differently um, in terms of the systems. It's basically like, as you, well, for Boat Buds, as you approach like max speed, you get extra layers basically. So like the first layer, again, I think is just percussion. And then the second layer is like, just like a layering. You don't get the melody um, until you hit like top speed and you stay there. Uh, and that, you know, just like trying to push people to, or like encourage them to like want to sail around, you know? Because um, I don't know, the, the boat felt really good. Adam did such a great job with the boat, and I wanted to like just sort of enhance that and sort of like encourage people through the melody only being there when you're at like full speed, like for consistent amount consistent amount of time to like yeah to just like you know um get people to to just sail around instead of like being any sort of uh like focused on a specific place they wanted to get to or whatever just like enjoy sort of the joy of, of sailing and moving around the water and all that mm. and the peak similar like as you get closer to the top you get more layers so like it's meant to like yeah, just enhance the mood. Um, oh yeah, but in terms of alternate mix, yeah, I was sorry. just like... Sorry about that, the little <laughs> thought thing went off. That's <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, in terms of Bow Buds, 
I just couldn't figure out if I wanted the melody to come in. Like I didn't, I couldn't figure out if I wanted to have all three layers at once, or have it like move from layer two to layer three a little bit more gradually. Mark mentioning the whole layer thing again and how Boat Buds was basically him deciding how to layer it differently made me think about other games that could work this way. Maybe you could have a section in the game where it layers differently based on your actions or something like that. Who knows? A lot of that, um, I actually did much later. So they were written by uh, Christina B. Okay. Um, I'm getting the name right. Um, and Maddie Vision was the one who did a lot of the, uh, or who did like all of the production and arranging. Like for me, it was just for that one specifically. I just wrote the melody and uh, and the, and sort of like the chords basically. Um, and then Maddie sort of rearranged it, and she worked with Christina quite a lot, and so they just sort of took what I had done and sort of built off of that. So yeah, um, I mean that that's like that was my comfort zone pretty much, right? Like like I was saying before, like mainly excuse me, uh, mainly like writing writing melodies and composing stuff as opposed to like the production side, which is definitely uh, something I'm still working on. Mark's ability to work with the other musicians really shines here, and I'm surprised we don't see it more often, especially in the game industry. Perhaps because a lot of games don't have lyrical music, which is another reason this stuck out. more than some that I'm more comfortable in. Um, I actually come from like a jazz background. I didn't start making music on computers until like I know, probably 22, 23. Um, I'm 30 now. Um, so yeah, I mean there's, there's definitely some comfort in that. Uh, more sort of jazzy stuff, bossa nova. Um, I don't know, like, I, I used to play, like, rock and metal as a as a teen, so, like, there is some comfort there. But I don't know if there's any sort of preference. I do like to, like, I, I like to try new stuff as much as I can. Um, lately, I've been really getting into, like, older sort of PS2 era, um, like, JRPG sort of, not necessarily JRPG, but there's like a lot of really cool stuff that was coming out of Japan at the time that I'm just trying to like wrap my head around and get more comfortable with. Um, but yeah, like a, a lot of this sort of journey has been me sort of being pretty comfortable with like uh, writing stuff, but less sort of comfortable on the technical side. Um, so it's just been a lot of figuring that out. So like EDM is definitely like a, a big weakness, one that I want to get more comfortable at, just like dance music in general. Um, oh, chiptune also like pretty comfortable with just because I did that for so long. Hearing that Mark started of jazz makes his range make a lot more sense because not only did jazz influence a lot of styles, but it was influenced by a lot of styles. So it makes sense he'd be able to make those connections there. It's also really impressive I was able to figure out the, the electronic composition so well. I mean, a lot of that would come down to design decisions, right? And how similar it is to the original game. Like, what's the setting? Is it in another park? Or is it... Mm, sure. It's another it's, part, similar vibe, I guess, but different character or something. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tricky one. I feel like, you know, the, the main melody is so sort of tied up in it that I would probably incorporate that in some way, but maybe, like, hint at it. Yeah. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to say, like... 
it would probably have similar vibes, um, you know, in terms of instrumentation and stuff, just because that's sort of what people people expect, and that is kind of the sound of the world um, as people know it. But yeah, in terms of, I mean, themes would definitely change, I feel like, you know, I don't think it would, I don't know that any of the themes would return, or even if they did, they would be drastically altered, or altered in some way where it's like harder to tell. Maybe the main theme comes back, but yeah, depends on the story as well, right? Cause this was, this one's very much like a, I don't know, kind of coming of age esque. I mean, it's like, it's that's that's sort of in the background. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of it's just like about cute little slice of life interactions. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it ever happens. Well, I guess we'll just, we'll yeah. see. Mark's answer makes total sense here, and yeah, it does matter a lot about the features and story and whatnot of the feature game, and it's proven with. Boat Buds, I think he'd be able to live up to the task just fine. And I hope to see more from him in the future from a short hike and anything else. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much to Mark for taking the time out of his schedule for the interview, and thank you for watching.